two and one, finding the centroid of a triangle. The idea behind this video is I want you to be able to know how to find a centroid and what a centroid actually is once you finish watching this video. Now, what I have done is I've plotted three points on a Cartesian plane, or basically an XY axis. Now we know that from three points we can create and construct an actual triangle. So I'm gonna do that first so that we can have kind of a visual for this triangle. And that is simply just connecting these points together. Now I didn't make the triangle in any way that it's some kind of an isosceles triangle or equilateral triangle or anything like that. The points were kind of just randomized. Now, if you're gonna be constructing a centroid, which is kind of the center point of a triangle, which is based on the center of mass for a uniform body, but when you're just starting this and maybe you're in grade nine or in grade 10, for the moment, it's just enough to kind of get yourself familiar of knowing how to construct this actual centroid. So a centroid is basically, you will take from each vertex and you're gonna create a median. Now, when you create the median, so you know that that goes to the midpoint of the opposite side, and you're going to do that with every single side. And that intersecting point between all of those medians, you'll notice that it intersects in one particular point. That point is called the centroid. So how do we construct something like that? So I'm going to show you that in this particular video. And the first step, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the midpoint of each line segment. So that's the first thing that we're gonna try to find. And I'm going to label these. So let's say if this is line number one, line number two, line number three. Now, just for convenience, I'm going to remove the Cartesian plane, although I'll keep the points there so that we have a, a nice, just a regular triangle as we have it. So now, what is the midpoint of line number one? So let's do that. Now, in order to find the midpoint, so we're gonna need to take the two points and actually calculate that midpoint. So I will take the X values and add them up together and divide by two, and then I will take the Y values and add them up together and divide by two. So that will give me the actual midpoint of that particular line segment. And I'll do that for every single line. So the first one, so I just wanna show you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the X value. So the X value is negative four, plus the other X value is simply negative two. And I'm going to divide this by two. So that is my X value within here. So notice that's negative six divided by two, which is negative three. So that's that, that's the X value. And my y value would be, in this case, I will take so negative one plus, and it will be four, and I will divide that by two. And for that, it's gonna be three over two, or which is just simply one over five. I'll keep it in fraction four. My point is negative three, three over two. This is the point of the midpoint that I had. Now. That is the first line segment. So I'm gonna do that for each line. I'm gonna do it in fast forward fashion now that you can see this midpoint, and then I'm gonna come back, all right? So now there you go. So we have our midpoint values. So now we can kind of label them out and then see what happens with them. So you'll notice that we have our midpoint, which is going to be somewhere over here. That's going to be the first one, so which is negative three, three over two. We have this second for our second line segment, which is going to be, so somewhere over here, that's our second point. And then we have our last one, and that's going to be somewhere over here. So now that we have our midpoints, we can construct the centroid. Notice that I can take, so you're going to connect. So these are your medians from each line. And finally, this one. 
And notice that they intersect at exactly the same point, and that is known as your centroid. Now, how would we construct and know exactly what that point is? Now, sure, we can kind of guess if we have it graphed out on this Cartesian plane or the X and Y axes. So I put those back in here. But if the numbers do not align and they're not very nice not numbers, because we do know that the medians intersect at the centroid, we can take two of the medians and simply find the intersecting point. And that is nothing else but simply a linear system, so two equations, two unknowns, and then we can find what that centroid is. So I'm going to take these and I'm going to construct two lines. Now, which ones you construct doesn't matter. You don't need to construct all three. You just need two lines because they all intersect at exactly the same point. So let us take, so I'm going to take, for instance, this line right here. So that's going to be my first median that I'll take. And then maybe I'll take this one right here. So that's going to be my second median. I'm going to find the equations of those two lines. And once I have those equations of the two lines, then I can find the intersecting point. Now, all I have right now is just points. So I will need to find out what the actual lines are. If I go down here, I'm going to take, so it's going to have, so I'm going to take line number one that will intersect. So I'm going to do that one first. Now, all I have right now is just two points which is the median, so that's the line. So let's call this line is going to be, so from this point to this point, so negative two, four, and one half and one. Negative two, four, one half, one. Let me just double check. So that's what we have. So now I can find what the slope is from this particular line. So again, remember that's rise over run. It's going to be like this, it's going to be my, let's say, let's call this point number two, and then this point, point number one. So I'm going to take y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, and that's going to be my slope. So notice this is going to be negative three all over. And here this is going to be, so it's one half plus two. And if you find a common denominator is going to be actually 5 over 2 right there because um, 2 is just simply 4 over 2 and now simplifying this it's going to be negative 6 over 5 and that is my slope once I have my slope I can find the intercept of that particular line so the y-intercept of that line and in order to do that so I have y is equal to mx plus b now I already know my m, it's gonna be negative six over five, x, this is y, plus b. Now I can plug in any of the two points I like into this particular line. So I can plug in point one or point two, it doesn't really matter. So I'll just take point number two for instance. So I'll have one is equal to negative six over five. My x is one half and I'm trying to solve for b. This is what I have there, and this is going to be negative six all over, and this is going to be 10, one. So I'm going to be able to simplify that in just a second, because six over 10 is just simply three over five. So I can remove that. Let's put that as three over five. And bringing it over to the other side is going to be positive. We're going to have one plus three over five is equal to b, and finding a common denominator, so this is going to be 8 over 5. My first line is going to be y is equal to negative 6 over 5x plus 8 over 5. That is my first line. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the second line, except I'm going to do it in fast forward motion so that you don't have to watch me go through this, but you can certainly try it on your own. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take now the second line, which is gonna be these two points, and I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. Once I have those two points, 
and I have my line, now I have two lines, then I can find the point of intersection, which is gonna give me the centroid. All right, so I'll see you back shortly. All right, so that took a little bit of time, but I wanted to prep it up as well. Notice that here we have our first original line. So we had this line, median, that we had. That was this line right here. That was going in this direction. So notice negative slope. And it is cutting through, okay, on the positive side. So the um, y-intercept was 8 over 5. And then our second line, which is right here, Notice it has a positive slope, not a very big one, it's 3 over 16, and then the y-intercept is 33 over 16. And that was right here. That's this line that is going through right here that we see. All right, so that's that line. Now, they intersect at the centroid. Now, I don't need to find the third median from the point negative 4, negative 2, all the way to that 3 over 2, 7 over 2 that you see there. I could but I don't have to, I just need the two lines to find that particular centroid. Now, in order to find this centroid, now that we have the two equations, you can use any method that you like. So you can use the elimination method, you can use the substitution method, if you've forgotten any of those, all right, I'll put up a link up above there. Um, or you can simply, you know, graph it out and then see it. Now, I always encourage students to, because I'm a very visual person, and you know to utilize Desmos, which is an amazing tool. So thank you to the to the creators and and the people who've made it kind of open source at least for the moment. I hope that it stays open source for a very long time to help students. And notice what I did was I just plotted the two lines. So you see that on the left hand side, I put the two lines in, and then here is your point of intersection. So uh, the Desmos tool is actually going to tell me that. So it looks like the point of intersection is negative 1 over 3 and 2. And we can check that. So in terms of our plot on the line, so let's take a look at that and notice that indeed it looks like it is 2 on the y-axis there. And it does look like it's kind of on the negative side, which is negative 1 over 3. Now, if you don't want to use a tool, you of course can simply take the two lines and now solve and you would find your two values. So you can substitute them in into each other or you can use the process of elimination, all right? So I'm gonna do that here for you, but I'm gonna do it in fast forward fashion just to prove that the decimals graphing tool was actually correct, all right? So see you back in just a moment. All right, so <laughs> with a little bit of uh, a jiggle there, I just basically substituted. So I had the two lines, I made them equal to each other, solved for x, and notice that solving for x, indeed, it gives us negative 1 over 3. And now I can take this and I can substitute it into any of the two equations. And that doesn't really matter which one. I'm going to take that in there. And once we do this, so 8 over 5, so if I work this out, and let's see what it gives me. Uh, so that's going to be positive. The 3 goes into this 2 times. And, and that is going to be, so this is 2 over 5, plus 8 over 5, which is 10 over 5, which indeed is 2. So the point of intersection, or the centroid, has been found. And that is exactly what we saw on the tool there with decimal. So utilize decimals especially if you're working at home you know to get it visually now we have a lot of different tools and i hope that your teachers allow you to, to use some of these things now if you're not allowed to use it at, uh, at a particular test if you had this on a test notice that it takes quite a long time to try to solve the entire thing and um, you can certainly go wrong very easily and hopefully i didn't um, so if you catch some kind of a mistake, definitely point it out in the comments. But this is exactly what a centroid is. And a centroid is nothing else but simply taking the medians of a triangle, any triangle. And when you take the medians, and then you will find that the point of intersection is called the centroid. 
Thanks for watching. See you in a future video. Bye, everybody.